Okay, welcome to part D in our introduction to probability. And we just got done learning the basic idea of what statistical independence is. So statistical independence says that the probability that A happens is the same whether or not we know B happens. So it just says that we, if we know that the probability of A is 50-50, Suppose somebody tells you, uh, tells us, oh, but, but B is true. We know that person is B. Suppose B means they're a boy, right? So if the probability of A is 50% and we know they're independent, then the probability of A, given they're a boy, is also 0.5. Now, two things that start with A and B, accountants and boys, right? So suppose 50% of people at a party are accountants. The probability somebody you talk to as an accountant is 0.5. If we know that being an accountant and being a guy, being a male, is are independent, then what that tells us is the probability someone is an accountant given they're a boy is also 50%. Knowing they're a boy does not change the probability that they're an accountant. Now this is of course not always true. It could be true that at a party um, being that 50% of the people are accountants, but that the probability of being an accountant given you're a boy is 0.8. In that case, they are not equal, right? And therefore they are not independent. If that's true, then they would be dependent. Now, what does dependent mean? Well, dependent simply means that 50% of the people at a party are accountants, but 80% of the boys, of the boys are accountants. So the probability that someone is an accountant depends on whether they're a boy or not. So this is the idea of independent versus dependent. Dependent is knowing B tells you something about the chance of someone as A independent? No, knowing B doesn't matter. Knowing B does not change the probability of being A. Now, statistical independence makes life easy sometimes. Now, here's why it makes it easy. Um, rule six is a special version of the multiplication rule here in number four that is used and simplifies life if you know that the things you're dealing with are independent. So the multiplication rule for independent events. We're just com combining rules, not three and five, sorry, four and five here. Combining rules four, multiplication rule with independence five, says take this multiplication rule. Suppose we want to find an intersection. Normally, we'd need to know the probability of A given B and multiply that times the probability of B. But if somebody whispers in my ear and tells me, but A and B are independent, you say, wait a minute, okay. If I want to calculate an intersection, I can take the probability of B and usually I would need to know the probability of A given B, but wait. I know what the probability of A given B is. That's the same as the probability of A. So all we do is we make this substitution here. Wherever you see the probability of A given B, you can substitute the probability of A. And so if A and B are known to be independent and you're sure, an intersection be, can be calculated in this way. Let me give you an example here. Things that are, are classically easy to think of as being statistically independent are, suppose I have two coins in my hand, two quarters, for example, two 25 cent pieces. And let's think about this first. Are these two coins independent? So I have coin one and I'm going to flip it and I'll either get heads or tails. And over here I have coin two, and I'm going to flip it and see if I get heads or tails. Okay. Now tell me this. <clears throat> if I were to flip coin two, what is the probability that I get a heads 
on coin 2? Well, that should be 50%, right? Now, let's go back to coin 1. I flip coin 1, and coin 1 turns out to be a heads. Let's go back to coin 2. What is the probability that I can get a heads on coin 2 now given that coin 1 was a heads? Is it still 0.5 or has it changed? Has something about coin 1 changed what's happening with coin 2 and the probability of getting a heads? Has the fact that coin one's is, 1 is heads, is that increased the probability that coin 2 is heads? No. Has that decreased the chance that the other coin could be a heads? No. I mean, coin 2 doesn't know what happened with coin 1. In fact, the same can be said about flipping the same coin twice. Coins have no memory. They don't remember what happened last time you flipped them. So what we say in statistics is, since the probability of getting a heads on the second coin is the same as getting a heads on the second coin, given whatever the result is on the first coin, that those two coins are statistically independent. The result of the first coin does not change the probability of what happens on the second coin. Since we know that's true, we can calculate an intersection. Let's use this rule here. Since A and B, heads on coin 1, are known to be uh, independent of what happens on coin 2, then let's calculate the probability that we get a heads on coin 1 and a heads on coin 2. This says that it's easy if you know those two things are independent, but you need to check. Once we know that, the probability of A and B, heads on coin 1 and heads on coin 2, we can just take the probability that we get a heads on coin 1, 0.5, and multiply that times the probability we could get a heads on coin 2, 0.5. And that equals 0.5 squared, 0.25. So we have a 1 out of 4 chance, 25% chance, of flipping a coin twice and getting a heads both times. One out of four chance. Now what's really neat about the multiplication rule for independent events is you don't have to stop at uh, two things. We can go to um, three things, four things, ten things. As long as all of them are independent, we're fine. So we could do, what's the probability that I get a heads on coin one and then I get a heads on coin 2, and I get a heads on coin 3, and a heads on coin 4, and a heads on coin 5. If all those five coins are independent, and I guarantee you that they will be, then we can just take the probability that the first thing happens, a heads on the first flip, times the heads on the second flip probability. Heads on that, heads on that, heads on that. And what we're going to end up with is just 0.5 raised to the fifth power. 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. And what we're going to end up with is 0.3%, about 3%, 0 0.03125. 0 0.03125. 0 and you could keep this going. Now, you, you don't have to have the same thing repeated again and again. It's just important that things have to be independent. So we could, as long as we ask ourselves and we're certain, uh, instead of having multiple coins, suppose we had a coin with heads and tails, and then we had a six-sided die. Six-sided die. We can calculate the probability that we get a heads on the coin and get a 4 on the die, right? Since those things are statistically independent, let's make sure. Suppose I got a heads on the coin. Does that change the probability that I can roll a die and get a 4? 
Well, certainly not. The die doesn't have any idea what's going on with the coin, right? So the die and the coin are independent. What happens on one does not change the probability of what happens on the other. Similarly, we can just multiply. What's the probability of A, the heads on the coin, 0.5, times what's the probability of getting A4 on a die? Well, that's 1 out of 6. 1 sixth is 0.16666 running, and we can round it off at some point, so that's going to give us 0.083333. There's about an 8% chance, a little bit larger than an 8% chance, that you could flip a coin, get a heads, and roll a die, and get a four on it, right at the same time, right? So that is how you use the independence rule, the independence uh, statistical independence idea to simplify things sometimes. But don't do this. Don't multiply probabilities to get intersections uh, unless you know those two things are independent. Now lastly, um, this is a rule that I don't know of another name for and most textbooks don't really cover it, so I just call it Berkey's Rule of Common Sense. I'm not saying I invented it, it's just what I call it in my classes. The Berkey's Rule of Common Sense says the probability of A and B plus the probability of A and not B is the probability of A. Here's how this is common sense. It just says if you take the probability of, say, being an accountant and a boy, everybody raise your hand who's an accountant and male, okay? You take and add to that the probability that somebody is an accountant and not a male, who do you have when you add those two groups together? Accountants who are male and accountants who are not male, you must have all of the accountants at that point, right? So the, if you take the probability of being A and B, add to it the probability of being A and not B, you've taken care of all the chances that something could be an A, and that's what I call Berkey's Rule of Common Sense. Now in the next couple of videos we're going to look at some interesting real-world data sets and we're going to put all these rules to use. So you want to have a list of these rules in front of you. The complement rule, the addition rule, the conditional probability rule, multiplication rule, this test to see if things are statistically independent, the multiplication rule, once you know things are statistically independent, and Berkey's rule of common sense. You want to have all these in front of you for the problems that we're going to uh, work in the next few lectures.